Good evening. Today is Thursday, December 9th, 2021. And I'll call this Fairfield City School District regular Board of Education meeting to order. Mrs. Lane, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Begley? Here. Mr. Birding? Present. Mr. Clark? Present. Mrs. Gundrum? Here. Mrs. Shorter? Here. Would you please uh, join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, the first item on our agenda is presentations and resolutions. Turn it over to Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Birdie, members of the board. We have two presentations on the agenda tonight, um, but we actually have three presentations for you this evening. Uh, the presentation that did not make it to the agenda is a special presentation to acknowledge the contributions of our outgoing board president, Mr. Michael Bird. Pause, I'll move over there. <laughs> <laughs> Does someone approve this agenda item? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can already tell you, you're supposed to be the one emotional tonight, <laughs> and I haven't even started yet. <laughs> so this is this could be tough for all of us. I'm going to catch my breath. I got to have to catch my breath for a minute before I start. So during Mr. Birding's tenure on this Board of Education, there's been a long list of accomplishments made by the school district and Board of Education. It would be impossible to name them all, but a few of them would be opening three new buildings, implementation of a one-to-one -one program, major renovations to facilities across the district, the opening of the school-based health center, opening and expansion of the Fairfield Academy to include middle school students, a new transportation building, district warehouse, and air conditioning installed at all FCSD buildings. Again, I could go on and on um, with a number of items. <laughs> In addition, Mr. Birding was named the 2018 ACTE US Region 1 Most Outstanding School Board Member. As I said, I could go on and on with the list, but I want to especially thank you for your leadership as a member of this Board of Education. <clears throat> this is when it gets tough. During a time in which people seem to be fast to anger and judge others, you have proven to be a voice of reason. Time and time again, you have taken the time to actively listen to the opinions of others. Whether or not those opinions are aligned with yours, your response has been consistent. You have always thanked them for taking the time to share their perspective. You have proven to be approachable because people realize you will not judge them for their opinions. Throughout your tenure, you have served as a role model for all of us. You have always maintained a very high level of professionalism, even when it wasn't reciprocated. More than anything else, you have been a giver. You have given all that you have for the students, the staff members, parents, and community members. In doing so, you have positively impacted the lives of thousands for many, many years to come. So on behalf of everyone in our school community, it is an absolute honor for me to present you with a key to the district. Well done, Mr. Birdie. Please come on down. As well, this is a proclamation. Congratulations, I would like to share just one more comment, and then I'll turn it back over to you. For anything that you like to say, or anyone else that would like to 
<laughs> it's funny tonight, uh, just a few minutes after his arrival, and Michael didn't know anything about this presentation, and his family knew, and they're all here, and we're so excited to welcome them, but he, Michael came up to me and said, hey, do I have to give my key back? <laughs> and I said, what key? <laughs> he said, well, when I first got here, when I first started serving on the board, I asked, someone asked him about getting keys, and he said, oh, I don't get any keys, but I thought for sure, how did you find out about this key? <laughs> So, uh, I don't know if he could see the look on my face like, no. what? Did I mean, someone that thought out? that the school board had keys to the buildings. We can let anybody in. It was too funny. So, that is funny. I didn't. Very timely. Yeah. So, again, congratulations. Thank you for your service. And um, we will miss you. Everyone will miss you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. In our meeting yesterday, we did not approve that agenda item, so I don't know how it got on there, but thank you very much. Uh, um, I was going to save comments to the end, but I guess it's appropriate now. Um, it, it's been a pure labor of, of love. Um, I remember, <laughs> I remember working on the outside of my house. I was up on scaffolding, and Paul Otten calls me, looking to fill some three empty seats that were going to be on the school board. And uh, he asked if I knew was some, some guy named Dan Hare. I said, no, <laughs> should I? And, uh, but uh, Dan was elected the same year as I was, and he, he was a true mentor to me. And, and of course, you know, uh, Mrs. Gundrum took his spot on the board when he moved away. I'm not moving away. Dan kind of abandoned us, <laughs> but I'm still going to be around. And um, I recently heard... Um, a speaker at a conference and he talked about um, when you look in the mirror what do you see and uh, he says most people see themselves but I challenge you to look and see the people that have influenced you in your life and who have got you to where you are now who, who brought you there and, and who helped you get, get there and I see the faces here uh, uh, that are up here with me today um, of course I see my family in a crowd and, I, and those are the faces that I, that I see in the mirror when I look in the morning, the people that have helped me get to where I am. Um, our family installed public service uh, early in our lives, and uh, hopefully we've passed that on to our children. Uh, my daughter Abigail will be taking, uh, she got elected to take my spot on the board, which is tremendous. It's, it's pretty cool to vote for yourself to get elected. Something very cool to vote for your child for an elected office. So that was pretty cool. Um, some of my fondest memories, I, I got to uh, hand my two boys their diplomas. I didn't get in quick enough to get my daughters their diplomas, but um, who knows? Maybe if I stick around long enough and come back when my granddaughters are graduating and can hand their, their diplomas, but that's a little ways off. Uh, I've had a great time. We've had some tremendous leaders here. Uh, I've um, enjoyed working with all the boards that have sat up here before, uh, you know, Mrs. Shorter has been a great influence on our board. She's been here 12 years, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I've, I've gone to her for advice. Of course, uh, the late um, Jerome Kearns, uh, I always went to him for advice when I first got on the board. I think some of the questions I had from him, for him, he thought were kind of unique, I guess. Um, but he, he was great, and like I said, Mr. Hare, um, but we have really um, tremendous leaders here. Mr. Smith has done a tremendous job of keeping our district on track during this pandemic and actually before the pandemic as well. And uh, Mrs. Lane does an incredible job of making sure the finances are in order. And quite frankly, I'm just here to make sure that we stay out of their way. Um, you know, we have to approve things, but they're the idea people. They're the ones that make this district run. And uh, a good school board will just stay out of the way of, of its leaders because we're not educators. We're just, we represent the, the citizens to make sure the schools are doing the things that they're supposed to do. And believe me, Fairfield leaders are doing the things that they're supposed to do. And so that's what makes us good school board members is that we don't try to, to change things. 
and we just let the, the people that are in charge and that know what to do do the things that they know how to do. And so um, I appreciate Roger. Um, I'm glad I was still here. While you're still here, I know this is your big retirement night as well. Um, we go back to the days of you at the middle school, at the intermediate school at the time. And I remember coming into your office after some of our basketball players had ripped things down off the walls. And <laughs> so, Mr. Martin, I'm really sorry about that. But uh, you were very generous then, and, and you will be missed by the district more than I will be, believe me. You've got a long history here, and uh, you've, your fingerprints are all over the district. So, I appreciate all that you've done. Thank you. So, but thank you all for. Um, I didn't have anything planned to say because I figured if I did, I'd probably cry. Um, so I, I hope I've lived up to the expectations that you've had as me as the, your president. Uh, I've, I'm honored to serve you as your president and uh, very honored that you sent me to Butler Tech to represent this district. Thank you. All right. No more surprises tonight, okay. I promise. <laughs> Our second presentation this evening is our annual equity progress report. We're very happy to have some members of our equity leadership team join us this evening for our presentation. Before I turn it over to some other members of our team, I would like to begin by talking a little bit about the mission and beliefs of our equity plan. And you can see the mission says teaching our children and ourselves to live, learn, and work together in a vibrant and diverse world. And I think the key word there is together. The key word in that mission, it's just so important for our kids and to, to learn how to work with others. And, and the world is not a perfect place and, and that's okay. And it's never going to be perfect, but we have to learn how to respect each other um, and work together uh, to get things done and to make things better. Uh, as for our beliefs, a strength of the Fairfield City School District is our expanding culturally and educationally diverse popu population. I truly believe that our diversity uh, is one of our greatest strengths. It, it provides us with opportunities to hear a variety of perspectives. And listening to the perspectives of others allows us to learn and grow, which makes all of us better human beings. And then lastly, under our beliefs, all children can learn and achieve to their full potential. And you've heard me say on many occasions, we use that word a lot, all or each. And we have an obligation and a duty as a district to serve every single child that walks through our doors. And it's critical that we remain committed to serving all of our children. So at this time, I will turn it over to one of our co-chairpersons and our principal at North Elementary, Mrs. Denise Hayes. Thank you so much, Mr. Smith. Uh, just to piggyback off of what Mr. Smith said, I have to tell you, I am the principal at Fairfield North Elementary School, but I truly am committed to the work that we do through our diversity efforts here in the district. It really makes me proud, and it's something that I like to talk to people about so they truly understand all of the great work that's going on within our district. I have to tell you one thing that is the most exciting to me, and I think that just displays the passion of the people in our district, is our commitment to continue to change and to learn and to grow to make sure that we are meeting the needs of our changing population. So if you take a look here, I just want you to see who is it that's making up our Fairfield City School District? If you take a look at the data that's on the screen, you will see that a lot of our subgroups are remaining steadily the same or steadily rising. If you look at our Asian Pacific Islanders, our Blacks, our Hispanics, our multiracials, those groups are steadily rising from 2018. As a result, our white or non-Hispanic group is declining just a tad. One thing that is really interesting to take a look at is our economic disadvantagement group. That tends to be decreasing just a bit as we're entering into this 2021 school year and on into 22. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And this is the lowest that it's been in the past couple of years. I do want to let you know a little bit about our students with special needs. 
Kathy Gilbert is our Director of Special Education here in the district and she could not be here tonight. But I would like for all of you to be aware that 15.9% of our student population includes students with special needs. And we provide numerous resources. We have several things in place in each of our buildings to make sure that those students are not forgotten and that they deserve the services that, and that they receive the services that they deserve. If you take a look down below, we have 422 students on a 504 plan, which gives them accommodations that they need to be successful in the classroom. And we also have about 1,600 roughly students that are on IEPs in our district. I do wanna let you know about this group that comprises our equity leadership team. Myself and one of the co-chairs along with Mr. Dennis Williams who couldn't be here tonight. We do have a variety of staff members from all across the board from the building level to district level. And most importantly, we have had the addition of student representatives. We have Ms. Kennedy Baker here with us tonight and Annie Udosin who really, really do a great job of providing us adults with that student perspective which really helps us drive our conversations and drives our decision making for all that we're doing to benefit the students of our district. Before we get into the plan this evening, I do wanna help you understand a little bit the way the framework works in terms of our equity leadership team. It is comprised of four pillars with all of the various things that we do throughout the district falling within each of these pillars. We have pillar one, which is headed up by Mr. Roger Martin, and that pillar is in charge of recruiting, hiring, and retaining administrators and teachers and all staff members across the district of color. We want to make sure that our population of people that are working with our students mirror the students that we serve. For pillar two, Mrs. Mandy Ogg, our curriculum director, is in charge of heading that up. She is in charge of increasing cultural awareness of all of our students, teachers, and administrators of the Fairfield City School District. So she's responsible of helping us to drive the work in terms of professional development, making sure that we're meeting our students' needs in and out of the classrooms with various opportunities. For pillar three, we have Mrs. Gina Gentry Fletcher who is in charge. She is our community relations director. She is in charge of increasing the community engagement and parental involvement. So all of the things that take place within the district fall under her umbrella, and we do our work with her at the head of that ship. And last, but certainly not least, we have Mrs. Katie post Pischel, who couldn't be here tonight. She is in charge of Pillar 4, which is increasing student engagement and learning opportunities for our students. So really taking a look at what we're providing inside of the classroom to make sure that we are meeting the needs of every individual students where they are and where they need to be. I believe that Ricardo Calles will be here tonight to talk about that particular since Ms. Uh, to talk about that particular pillar since Mrs. Postpichel can't be with us this evening. So now I would like to turn it over to Mr. Roger Martin to talk to you more thoroughly about everything that's involved with Pillar One. Thank you. I do want to say, uh, well, one, thank you for your kind comments, Mr. Birding. Uh, I, I am going to be around for a while longer. I'm, going to be here for the rest of the year, so uh, we've got time to talk about me. Uh, <laughs> not that anybody needs to. But uh, I want to say that the equity work that we've been involved in now for over a decade has been some of the most rewarding work that I've ever done in education. It's been meaningful, it's been consistent, and really our district has become a leader in this work around the state. And it's just an honor to be a part of that. I appreciate uh, Denise Hayes and her leadership. Um, I appreciate the pillar one is the work is done by a committee. It's called the Diversity Recruitment and Retention Committee because we want to recruit a, a staff and teachers and administrators who look like our students. And we're still a long ways away from that, but we've made some progress over the years. Um, if you look at this slide, uh, when we started the work in 2011, there were 3.23% of our staff members were people of color. 
and we've worked hard to increase that. It's difficult work finding people, um, but we've moved up to 6.42% uh, being people of color in our district. Um, statewide, only 5.2% of the educators in the state are people of color. So when we come in at 6.42, we're certainly above average as far as being able to find, recruit, hire people of color in our, in our district. So I appreciate that very much. Uh, because of COVID and some of the things that we've been unable to do to recruit people, uh, our numbers actually went down a little bit this year. We had a net loss of two. But through some of the things that we do, some of our retention strategies, we track where every person of color who leaves our district, we want to know why they left and where they're going. And this past year, we were able to find five new great uh, people of color to come and work in our district as far as teachers and administrators, uh, but we lost seven. And just so you know, uh, out of those seven, one moved back to Michigan to be with family. Uh, one resigned to stay home with their child and left the teaching profession as a result of COVID. Uh, one began, she was a school nurse and she began a, a new career at Children's Hospital. Two left us because they got advances in other school districts. They became principals uh, in other districts, so we were very proud of their promotions. One left education totally, and only one transferred to another school district. So we try to track this so we know it, we can hire lots of new people, but if we have people going out the back door, you're not making much of a, of a change. So this year we lost more than we gained, but we're regrouping and pressing on. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, uh, Ricardo, who is here, and our uh, Katie Myers, our head of human resources, they're going to go down to the University of Cincinnati and be involved with some mock interviews so that we can form relationships early on in the year with prospective teachers of color so we can have a better chance of getting them into our district in the future. So we appreciate, appreciate their work. We begin looking not only at our professional staff members, but we also look at our support staff. And our support staff, we started looking more closely at that in 2017, and we've gone from 4.3% of our support staff, being people of color, to 72 this year. So that's a great increase. And then this year we decided, well, let's take a look at our EL tutors, because we have 47 of those. That's English learner tutors. Uh, we have 47 of those in the district. Well, we found out that 12 of those, so 25.5% of our EL tutors, are people of color. And so we're making some advances and some growth uh, strategies. Our DERC committee, as we call it, Diversity Recruitment and Retention Committee, we meet every month and we plan what can we do to draw more people in here who want to work in Fairfield. And I've listed some of the strategies for identifying them, and some of the strategies that we use to retain them here uh, in Fairfield as well. Did, did want to announce that uh, you may want to watch coming in January, the Dirk is providing a really special week. It's called Unity Week, and we've got some very special things planned that we will be rolling out in the, in the near future. I did want to take a moment, because the people in this committee are very dedicated to this committee. Most of them have been on the committee for many years. Uh, we lost a couple, like I said, some that moved away this year, but we've gained, there's always people who want to be a part of this hardworking committee, but they're listed there. I'm not going to take time to read all them, but it includes Jennifer Moore, who is the Fairfield's Teacher of the Year, which is awesome, uh, but we have lots of great people who are involved in this work. We meet at least once a month, and we're busy trying to recruit and retain people of color. I will pass it on to Ms. Ogg. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Um, our second pillar is uh, to increase cultural awareness of all students, teachers, administrators, and staff of the Fairfield City School District. So this work is done uh, by the curriculum uh, department in conjunction with the building uh, uh, leaders and leadership. So um, one of our goals is to remove barriers for students so all students can have access to a high level of learning. So one of the best examples of this right now is in our math department at the high school. We 
They're currently offering a course called Mathematical Modeling and Reasoning, and later tonight, uh, you'll hear me talk about our intent to apply for a pilot in discrete math and computer science. So both of these courses can be offered as Algebra II equivalent uh, courses, and by that, we mean equivalent in rigor and critical thinking, just not in content. Algebra II has been a barrier for many students um, as they work through their high school career, and the Ohio Department of Education is now helping districts offer alternatives uh, to that. So we are really excited to be early adopters in this arena because we feel it's truly a way to remove barriers for our students. Um, secondly, we provide educational opportunities, or we want to make sure we provide educational opportunities and materials that reflect our cultural diversity. So one example of this is we are working through a K-5 ELA adoption uh, this year. And as we work through that, um, as, as we evaluate programs, we want to apply an equity lens. Not only is it important for our diverse student population to see themselves in the materials we use, but we also want to make sure that all students of different abilities and backgrounds can access learning with the program. And all of this is especially critical as we choose a new core reading program. Um, additionally, um, our social studies department, again at the high school, will be adding an elective course on black history. And that was based on an interest survey uh, that they gave earlier this year. So we're excited to move forward with that and we'll have that in the program of studies for next year. And finally, we work to provide professional learning opportunities that support the development of cultural responsiveness, multicultural awareness, and empathy. Um, a lot of our PD for administrators um, at the beginning of this year has been focused on the new evaluation system. But in January, we will be working with Tommy Lewis from Make It Plain Consulting to continue our diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Um, but the building leaders um, continue to incorporate professional learning opportunities around these topics for their teachers and staff in their buildings. And that looks different in every building. Uh, some are doing book studies, some are working with small groups, some are working directly with their building leadership teams. Uh, some are introducing topics at their monthly PDs, but they are carrying forward that work um, in the buildings. So um, at this time, I will turn it over to Mrs. Gentry Fletcher. Thank you, Mrs. Og. Pillar three. When we look at pillar three, we can see how much our work to increase community engagement and parental involvement aligns with the diversity plan's mission and belief statements that were mentioned earlier in this presentation. We believe that our engagement and outreach activities help teach our community and staff members about the importance of embracing the unique differences of our students and their families. Whether it's cultural, in learning styles, or socioeconomic status, just a few examples of that. This pillar ties in with the work of our Community Diversity Alliance, which is nicknamed the CDA, um, which partners with our district on several outreach projects. A few examples of those include the Back to School Bash, it was held once again this past August after a break due to COVID. We were very excited that we were able to resurrect that this year. We estimate that approximately 1,000 people attended this event where backpacks filled with school supplies were distributed, free refreshments, immunizations, and haircuts were provided. And you can see the happy face of the young man getting his haircut, um, getting his free haircut. <laughs> by a community volunteer, so we're very, we were very appreciative of that. Um, like I said, free refreshments, immunizations, haircuts were provided, um, and families experienced some fun activities, including pony rides, puppies, and face painting. Um, one of the other things that we do is we um, support our success liaisons, our Butler County success liaisons, with a gift card collection drive so that they can purchase, purchase groceries for families in need. Um, one of the things we found out is that so often our success liaisons reach into their own pockets to provide services or needs for the families that they serve. So we wanted to do something to help them out a little bit. And they've been coming all week. We just wrapped up a drive and they've been coming all week and picking up gift cards um, generously donated by 
our staff members. So we also work with our English learners, or our EL students, and their families by providing translation of documents, flyers, and encouraging them to use the translation features on our website and our rapid, our remind rapid messaging, ah, I can't talk tonight, remind rapid messaging system. Mr. Burning has me all choked up tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Engaging our students with special needs through a number of activities is another um, one of our projects. I always enjoy the students who come to our office from the freshman school to collect our recycling. It's a great way for us to build relationships with these students, and I personally look forward to their weekly visits. It brings a great smile, and they're so proud of the work that they do, and it's really nice to see the interactions that we have with those students. Um, another example is the annual fishing trip, um, which, fingers crossed, will resume this year after a two-year hiatus due to COVID. Um, we also encourage parents, community members, and others to join our diversity work. Um, we invite them to the Building Community Diversity Alliance meetings, as well as the District Community Diversity Alliance meetings, and we've had some success with that at the district level, um, and met some new friends who bring a great perspective to our meetings. We do a summer lunch program, which provides another relationship building opportunity for our staff with families. Even with the COVID lim limitations, we were pretty successful with that last summer. We adopt families in need. Our CDA and district staff members adopt families during the holidays, and the CDA continues that relationship throughout the school year. As you can see, we continue to make um, strides to reach out to our families to ensure they have the best possible experience while they are attending Fairfield schools. It's not only, it is not only an easy thing for us to do, but it is the right thing for us to do for kids and their families. And we're very pleased and proud to be able to do that for them. So I'll now turn this over to Mr. Ricardo Calle, who is stepping in for Mrs. Postpichel. Um, who was unable to be here this evening as Mrs. Hayes Malier. He will share with us some information about Pillar 4. Awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Gentry Fletcher. So I get to talk to you about Pillar Number 4, which talks about increasing our student engagement um, and learning opportunities <coughs> to emphasize the value and importance of diverse student participation in all curricular and extracurricular activities. Uh, so one of the things that we do is that we continue to build positive relationships between students and staff to kind of foster that engagement with the curriculum. And I myself as a Fairfield grad graduate can attest to that. Um, I was an ESL student who at the age of 12 barely knew the words hello and goodbye and now it's truly an honor to be able to come back to uh, the place that made me. Um, so it's meaningful and it part, a huge part of that was the relationships that that looked very different than me. Um, thanks, it was thanks to their impact that they had on my life that I'm able to be here today. We continue to provide multiple opportunities to develop culturally aware student leaders, uh, which in a second you'll get to hear from Kennedy. Um, we continue to provide opportunities for students to access advanced courses throughout their time at, in Fairfield. I'm proud to say that we're beginning the early work in our middle schools as we set a schedule and uh, processes for kids to be identified and begin that track into taking um, advanced courses prior to entering uh, their high school journey. Another thing that we've started is the payment of assessments such as the PSAT, Work Ease, Practice, Practice ACT, ASVAB, AP, and Pre-ACT exams. As you can see, that's a long list. But uh, what we get to celebrate in that is that we're opening opportunities for all students, regardless of what their plans are after they graduate from Fairfield, whether they enter the workforce, whether they plan to attend a four-year college. And now I will turn it over to Kennedy, who will share some information. All right. Can everyone hear me? Awesome. <laughs> and thank you, Mr. Kayas. Once again, as he said, my name is Kennedy Baker, and I am a student representative for ELT. And 
Aside from being a representative of VLT, I am heavily involved in other local organizations as well, such as the National Honor Society Mock Trial and the Cincinnati Symphony Youth Orchestras, the Trium Music Honor Society, and I also serve as an elected board member for the Big Brothers Big Sisters organization for Butler County. However, my most rewarding role and responsibility is once again being a student representative for ELT. I truly appreciate this opportunity as a student representative of ELT, as my mother, Katrina Key Baker, who is actually here with us today, was actually a original member of ELT and was actually a part of their formative um, stages 10 years ago. And today I would like to focus my presentation on Pillar 4, which prioritizes the ability to increase student engagement and student learning opportunities throughout the district, as Mr. Kayez said. And along, additionally, with improved communication between students and faculty within the district as we do truly prioritize these things. There has also been an increase in access to clubs promoting cultural awareness of various minority students. Clubs such as AXEL, BSU, which stands for Brothers and Sisters United, ASU, which stands for African American Student Union, and the Asian American Association have all recently been added in order to improve cultural awareness throughout our school district. And just to recap, during our previous ELT update report in about 2020, I addressed diversity within our school district's advanced and AP classes. Previously, I mentioned as there's been a big increase in minority students throughout the district, at times there's not been an equal representation of minority students in advanced and AP classes. Speaking from personal experience, I can attest to specific times of limited information offered to minority students when it relates to pursuing higher and advanced classes. At times, it appears as though students are at a disconnect as minority students and are not always given the ample amount of information and motivation to pursue these advanced classes. However, according to various AP teachers, the rate of minority students within AP classes has slowly increased over time, specifically from 2010 until 2021. This slow but steady increase in diversity within advanced classes was able to continue as ELT has actively served the community since 2010 to its present day today. I strongly believe in the presence of ELT within the school district as it has contributed to a lot of these positive changes. And for these ongoing reasons, this is why ELT's presence within the district is needed and necessary. It is ELT's goal to increase the number of minorities enrolled in advanced classes with successful outcomes, as this committee strongly believes in the importance of representation of academically inclined students within Fairfield City School Board and the district. <laughs> I am extremely proud to say from last year to this year, ELT has made great improvements to promote diversity within advanced and AP classes. Recently, ELT has discussed plans for upcoming informational fairs and sessions where upcoming students, specifically incoming high school students and their parents, can have the opportunity to learn about information regarding AP and advanced classes. I plan on working with ELT to get current AP minority students to serve as volunteers during this session in order to not only to provide student perspectives of AP classes, but to also recruit future minority AP students to pursue these classes. Additionally, as said previously, the ELT has worked closely with the high school and has officially developed an additional elective class focusing on the history of African Americans. This is like a really big step. I'm a, I'm a senior this year, so I won't get to take it. But, <laughs> but once again, as a graduating senior, I am extremely proud of the accomplishments of ELT. 
I am also thankful for ELT as I now plan on taking these newfound philosophies of diversity and inclusion to the University of Georgia where I plan on continuing my education in pre-law and political science. Once again, thank you all for allowing me to speak and share the perspective from the student body in regards to this important matter. Lastly, I would like to specifically thank the dedicated members of ELT for selecting me as a student representative to speak on this essential issue in regards to our local education system. Thank you. And I get to follow that with some closing <laughs> remarks. I feel like those should be our closing remarks. Thank you so much. Um, so in closing, just a few comments. Um, one, the diversity plan is a work in progress. And that's one of my favorite things about our plan is that it is a fluid document. And uh, I've said this before, the world is changing rapidly. The needs of our students are changing. Uh, and it is important for us to continue to adapt and change. We, you know, we, we have to keep up with the needs of our kids. That's the most important thing we, that we need to do. And this plan, because of its flexibility, we're able to do that. And we can, we can make changes and go in a different direction um, if we need to. And by the way, our student representatives have been outstanding because when, what they bring to the table is we, you know, as adults, we sit around and talk about what we think is happening. Um, but they can set us straight and share, and most importantly, just share their stories with us and, and um, about their experiences. So they've been a wonderful addition. Um, two other things I want to say, and, and, and uh, it's already been said, but I want to thank every single one of our ELT members, the ones who are here tonight and those that weren't able to make it. Very um, critical work that is taking place. They are very dedicated, very committed, and I just want to say thank you to all of our ELT members. And then lastly, I want to thank the Board of Education for their support as well of our equity work and our diversity plan, because without your support, none of this would be possible. Thank you. Thank you. Comments or questions from the board? Yeah. I, uh, oh, go ahead. OK. I, this is great. I, I, I think it's a wonderful thing we do, and I think it's uh, 10 years in the making, but still growing and expanding, and it's baby steps, and I get that. I know you talked about recruitment, retention. It's tough, right? But, uh, but we keep working at it, and that in and of itself is a victory. Uh, when we looked at um, how diverse we are, and you talk about 12% of our student body is learning English, that's a challenge, right? That's a challenge for the district. And uh, this committee and the work of uh, those involved become advocates for all those students when they can't be their own advocates. And that's, uh, that's very important. And, and to your other point, uh, minorities, blacks, Asians, Hispanic, now uh, make up a large cross-section of our student body. And we have to be um, inclusive. We have to... Uh, be there to address the needs of those students. And so I, I just love what this committee's doing and uh, keep up the good work. And, and Kennedy, Kennedy, thank you very much. You're a fine representative. Sure. Yes, and Mr. Um, <coughs> Brian, I, I just can't tell you, Mr. Begley, your comments um, are just right on point. The whole presentation tonight was excellent. Um, as usual, you guys have been at this for quite some time, and it's just getting better and better. Even through um, the challenges that we've had with uh, the COVID, with the pandemic, you know, you've still been able to um, keep the goal of, of you know, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion at the forefront. And so, you know, even though we've lost some members of um, some employees of color. I believe that there will be um, other great employees because we, we've got some great ones. Um, I look at um, Jennifer Moore, you know, and even though she's from that unfortunate school, Auburn, <laughs> <laughs> roll tight, but 
I have to tease her. I enjoy teasing. We go back and forth with that. But um, she's been such a great addition, along with the other candidates. So I am very hopeful um, for the future and uh, looking forward to the work that you guys are doing um, in spite of you know, everything that's going on in the country, which can be a little chaotic, but I think that we are on the right path and we continue to support the work that you've done. And of course, Kennedy, great job. Excellent job as usual. You're amazing. The University of Georgia is getting an incredible asset that I think we all had something to do with, you know, with that, including her parents, of course. But <laughs> great job, great job. Thank you. Other comments? Um, I just want to echo what Mrs. Shorter and Mr. Begley said. Uh, this is a lot of information uh, to take in, and I appreciate everybody that put this together. And Ms. Kennedy did a great job. So um, thank you so much for being here. Um, it, it is interesting to see the trends over the years and, you know, the number of students we have with disabilities and, and English learners, economic disadvantage, and, and students of different um, cultural backgrounds. It, it's very interesting to see what our uh, community is made up of. And um, I appreciate all of the work that you're doing with this. Thank you. Mr. Clark? Yes. Um, Ms. Kennedy, that was fantastic. Well done. Uh, between you and Annie, I think the world is, is under good leadership. <laughs> yes. Um, I can't say any better than what's already been said, but I, I will say when you look at our community all over Butler County, that's Fairfield School District, right? And it's going to grow more and more to be like that. So the, the opportunities we have to, uh, to involve and, and bring in minority uh, groups, people uh, of diversity, to get them involved more and more in learning, uh, to make it easier but more accessible. I guess is a good word. Like you mentioned, uh, the, the material and the, uh, the communication is getting better, and that's, that's huge. I mean, that, that's big. And to see the steps over the last couple of years, even though this has been going on for 10 years, the steps that have come uh, seem like they've progressively gotten a little faster, a little better, a little more aggressive in a great way. And I see that happening more and more and more. So uh, I love this. I think this is really, really good. And thank you again. And we've got a great team of leaders focused on this very important uh, subject. And um, this was important. I know my wife Susan and I were part of the original CDA when it started. Uh, it has since evolved to something much better than it was uh, when we were involved with the then middle school. Um, we only had one. <laughs> but uh, it's important work, and I'm very proud of the work that we're doing. Um, it was interesting, about three years ago, my father and I were at a Cincinnati public school meeting, and they were just beginning to have those conversations that we've been doing for about seven years. And so I think Fairfield is a leader uh, in this area, and I'm very proud to be part of that. So thank you very much, Mrs. Hayes, and please pass that information on to the rest of the team. Thank you very much, and thank you. I hope you come back, and I mean, you're a great asset to our community, so hopefully you know you're schooling you you'll come back and come home and and, and be a, a future leader in our community thank you so much and uh you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting if you don't want <laughs> that's my christmas gift to you <laughs> okay uh the next item on our agenda is the freshman school spotlight mr smith yes thank you mr burry members of the board we're excited to have a uh, school spotlight on our freshman school this evening this time, I'll turn it over to our principal at the freshman school, Mr. Berkemeyer. And I know they're waiting for him next door to participate in a concert. Hopefully, we'll get you out of here on time to for sure, for do sure. your other duty. Uh, while our freshmen uh, come up, I want to speak on behalf of Emily Newton and myself as ad administrators for the freshman school. Emily was not able to make it tonight. Her daughter had her first choir concert, uh, so she is um, celebrating that. Um, but. Uh, Again, uh, very excited. Um, always want to start a similar way, but I want to start by thanking uh, Michael for his service um, to our district. Um, he's had an impact, obviously, on all of our schools uh, and our community. He's had a personal impact on my family, you know, and, uh, and that, and I, I thoroughly appreciate that. Um, as I always start every meeting, I, I always thank the community. Um, I am fortunate 
uh, to be working in an absolutely beautiful building. Um, I can't believe it, but it's our fifth year uh, within that building and uh, my 10th year in the district, and I know what the old, old, the old building provided. Um, while we had the human resources, uh, the structure in and of itself and the layout, um, it's amazing what education looks like in the new building. Mm -hmm. And so I know there are times um, when the district has to reach out to the community and ask for help. Um, and I can tell you the impact um, that the generosity of our community uh, has given our students uh, in the education and what education looks like within our building. And so I always start with that thank you, seeing it firsthand, living it firsthand. Um, if you don't understand the impact, it is enormous uh, and it is appreciated. Um, Officer Singleton, Officer Mack are, are uh, in the back. I, I have to, again, uh, move on to a thank you for the police department and um, all of the Cincinnati, uh, or the uh, city of Fairfield and Township Fairfield uh, Police Department. It was an interesting week for us. I appreciate all of our leadership uh, here. I appreciate them, uh, everything that's provided. Again, when you're living it firsthand, um, seeing um, the partnership and uh, having to be in charge of the building. And um, when stuff like this transpires and seeing how well and strong people work together um, to see every single one of our students arrive today. Every single one of our students, you know, that arrived uh, get a strong education today, and every single one of our students that arrived today go home on the bus. Um, that's because of the partnership, the teamwork that we have, the leadership that we have, um, and it is thoroughly appreciated. Everything, um, you know, this district does. Uh, as we uh, look into just a, a couple highlights, and I'm going to turn it over to our class council and our wonderful leaders that we have. Uh, within our building. Um, I just want to thank all of our leaders. Uh, we've had a um, terrific track record of success at the freshman school um, from when uh, both Emily and I took over. Uh, we had the Earn the Momentum Award three years in a row. Um, you get that by uh, showing um, above average growth in your gifted population as well as your lowest 20% in students on IEP. So you're kind of um, a wide spectrum of students. Um, unfortunately, COVID uh, came and did not allow state testing um, to happen and uh, obviously bring it back this year. They haven't rolled out any awards or, or any of those things, but we are happy with the track record of success we have for our students. Listening to Kennedy talk, I'm gonna say one more thing, because uh, again, I appreciate the leadership. There's so many conversations behind the scenes, Mr. Smith, Ms. Lane, Mr. Martin, um, went to Miss Og when she first came in and, and I saw a need for what she, um, Kennedy was talking about in our gifted population, our advanced classes, um, reached out with some ideas of what we could potentially do um, at the freshman uh, building at the start of their high school career. And I'm excited when, when I met with Mr. Uh, Smith, Mr. Martin and Ms. Og, uh, Ms. Og um, shared you know, those results, not that they didn't know them, um, but even through COVID, um, the percentage in our gifted population actually outtested 2019. Our 2021 scores outtested 2019 even through the pandemic. So um, I can say firsthand that our leadership is behind everything that Kennedy has shared. Um, I've seen it again and, uh, and it is very much appreciated. We're doing the best we can obviously within the building. Saying that, you really came to hear our students um, and see our, our students' faces. So uh, happy, uh, Ms. Stephenson is a new teacher in our building this year um, and has graciously stepped up, her and Ms. Daniels, to be in charge of our student council. Our class council has done an absolutely terrific job already this year, although we're early into the, uh, the uh, uh, school year, and they're gonna have, turn it over to them and let them share their, their presentation. down a little bit. Um, hello, my name is Shelby Sevlinson and I'm an English teacher at the freshman school and a co-advisor of the freshman class council. Um, thank you for having us here this evening. Um, we are the class council at the freshman school. Here are just a few of our student leaders. Um, so they are going to give you just an overview of what we're all about. Um, so I'm going to give it to them so they can tell you about it. Selflin is going to start us off. Class 
Council is a student-led organization that encourages positive influence and unity throughout our school. We strive to create the best environment for students to feel comfortable learning in. Our council reaches out to more than just our school. We try to make an impact on our entire community. Class Council demonstrates leadership through trying new things, such as public speaking on the school announcements. We exhibit good communication skills by spreading our positive campaigns to all students, teachers, and faculty. We do so through posters, announcements, and sheer word of mouth. We practice selflessness because our projects benefits group outside of ourselves, such as those throughout the community. Overall, we strive to be strong leaders in our school. Our goal for the year are to create a positive school spirit, organize events to celebrate the staff and students, and plan activities for the school. To sum it all up, we want to make freshman year fun and memorable for all students. Even though the freshmen can't attend the homecoming dance unless they are invited to it, we still wanted to create a way for students to get excited about the new school year and homecoming games. We had different spirit themes for each day of the week, like Twin Day, PJ Day, and Throwback Day. The teacher or class in each first bell chooses the most spirited person in their class. That winner got a donut reward for showing so much school spirit. If I had to guess, I would say that PJ Day was everyone's favorite day. At the Fairfield Freshman School, the monthly tribe trait is a characteristic that is emphasized for all students to display it. The class council creates a video explanation about the tra trait for the month and, is, and gets displayed on the morning announcements. Students are able to nominate other students by completing a Google form that is located in the 2025 tribe Google Classroom, which all students have joined. Each mo during the morning announcements, one response gets picked and both students are recognized. While student council does not run the Google Classroom or the Google Form, we, we create the videos to help students be aware of the tribe trait for each month. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm Shannon, and I am a member of class council, and <laughs> Ms. Devinson, can you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to highlight is something that we just finished. Um, it was the canned food drive, and um, the canned food drive was a project done by class council to help collect um, food, toiletries, and toys for families that need it over the holiday season. Um, like mentioned by my previous members, uh, class council is all about giving back to the community and the students within it. Um, so what we did is it was a competition between first period classrooms to help encourage students to bring more in. And we would um, collect those and give them to the Fairfield Food Pantry. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> sorry. so basically, that incentive brought a lot of um, items in, and it was one of the highest amount of items that the freshman school has seen in years. And the class that won uh, got a donut breakfast, which was actually my class. So <laughs> go us. <laughs> and um, the way we encouraged this uh, little competition is, as you can see, class council made uh, that poster and they, we hung them around the school. We told our homerooms about them and we um, just tried to spread as much 
awareness of what was going on and as you can see all those items were brought in and I think that's like a great amount and I was just I was really proud of the whole school for everything that got brought in and also proud of my class because <laughs> we won. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Trinity, a member of class council. I will be talking about upcoming events and ideas. This week we have been working at Spirit Shop during lunch. We are in, in the process of planning at a possible prep rally to celebrate the end of the first semester. Later in the year, we have a dodgeball tournament to raise money for our class fund, which we had throughout the years at the freshman high school and senior high school. At the end of our senior year, the leftover money will be donated to a charity of our choice. Um, in the Google Classroom with 2025 students, we will be putting a vote in to decide if we have a dance or not in the springtime. Um, and I'm going to talk about the Fairfern, my experience at the freshman school. First off, I love that it's a div diverse school group of students. Students are given opportunities to be independent and with their learning and are given choices in their classes. The teachers and administration have high academic and behavior expectations for the students, which create a safe environment for everyone. Also, the teachers are understanding and listening to students which make a genuine relationship between students and teachers. Thank you for our time. Um, and if you have any questions, you can ask any of them because they can answer them pretty well. Thank Question, you. <laughs> questions, comments? I'll make a comment real quick. I, you know, congratulations on, on how you're already leading in your school. When you see what Ms. Kennedy has, has done in her high school career path, you, you're on that path. And I think it's amazing to see where you kind of start out with leading and, and putting, this, putting this together and look where Kennedy's going now and where she's hopefully coming back to Fairfield. Um, <laughs> just that, 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 that pathway that, that we continue to lead here in the school district is amazing. And you, you guys are, are a, a uh, young leaders in charge of your school and as freshmen and, and you're gonna do well in your high school and on and on and on. So just thank you, it's an inspiration. Yeah. Any other comments? Shorter? Yes, um, I am really impressed by what you're doing. I think service is exceptionally important and I'm very, very proud of what you guys are, um, are, are you know, giving back to the community. So in going forward, just keep up the good work. You guys are all leaders, role models, and just keep, keep on going with the service and just remember that it's about what you do for others more so than anything else that really, really counts. So keep up the good work. And thank you. Any other comments? Um, I'll just paraphrase basically what you said before. Go you. Like you guys, <laughs> you, you all are great. And um, yeah, I, I, to echo what everybody else said, I think you're all headed to great places. So we're glad, we're glad you're here. Well, thanks for uh, sticking with us tonight. It's a little lengthy, but thank you all very much. You did a great job. I think many people would agree that uh, the freshman school is the Disneyland of Fairfield schools. Because <laughs> they're heard that a time or two. It's their it's the only class that's yeah. in that building. So. Yeah, very nice. Oh, well. <laughs>